Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Rock Cut Tombs in Egypt Archaeologists in Egypt accidentally found a series of mysterious rock cut tombs. They found over 250 ancient tombs cut into the side of a mountain, with many of them dating back 4,200 years. You might be wondering how such a discovery could be made by accident. According to the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, it all happened during an archaeological survey. It wasn't like a donkey stumbled upon them. It was still archaeologists who made the discovery, but they hadn't been looking for the tombs. They were investigating the Al Hamidiyya necropolis near Sohag when they found hundreds of niches and chambers carved by hand into the side of the mountain. The graves date from between 2200 BC and 30 BC. From ancient Egypt to the death of Cleopatra, Egypt's last pharaoh. Unfortunately, there don't appear to be any mummies. Whoever was buried inside these tombs were taken from their final resting places long ago, probably by grave robbers. Still, some of the tombs are impressive. There are doors inscribed with hieroglyphics, sloping passages leading into deep underground chambers. Historians believe the tombs were allocated for the common people. They were just ordinary graves for ordinary folk, people who couldn't afford things like mummification, or to have their brains pulled out through their noses. Number 9. A Hole in the Skull 3,500 years ago in Israel, a pair of brothers came down with a serious illness. These brothers lived in an upper-class family, meaning they had access to all the best doctors of the day. To fix their injuries, these brothers had to undergo some serious surgical operations. One of them underwent a radical procedure known as trephination, meaning he had a square hole removed from his skull. Evidence of the brothers was discovered at the remote archaeological site of Megiddo in northern Israel. This is a place in the middle of the desert, not somewhere you'd want to take a leisurely stroll. The bones found at the site now appear to be the oldest evidence of such a surgery being practiced in the area. Older evidence of trephination has been found in France, going back 6,500 years. For some bizarre reason, prehistoric doctors had a fascination with cutting holes in skulls. Rachel Kalisher with Brown University says there have been about a dozen ancient skulls found in the Middle East with trephination holes. The brothers lived between about 1550 and 1450 BC. They were discovered buried underneath the ruins of a house in a wealthy part of the city. One brother had his skull perfectly intact, but died in his early 20s. The second brother lived a little longer, though not because he went through with the procedure. There was no evidence of healing meaning he likely died after the operation. Considering the doctor would have been using primitive stone or bronze tools, attempting brain surgery was wildly ambitious. And now for number 8, but first, it's shout-out time! I want to say a big thank you to Jessica Kovacs and Patrick Nisius for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about mysterious discoveries. Number 8. Taos Pueblo Taos Pueblo is an ancient town about a mile from the city of Taos, New Mexico. And even though it's only a mile from a city, it's still essentially in the middle of nowhere. It was definitely in the middle of nowhere 1,000 years ago, when the town was inhabited by the Tiwa Native American tribe. To this day, it's one of the oldest continuously inhabited communities in the U.S with its residents still speaking the Taos language of their ancestors. As of 2010, there were roughly 150 permanent residents living inside the historical Pueblo. But let's take a deeper look at the history of the place. The Taos indigenous people likely settled here starting around the year 1000. But by the year 1300, drought had moved into the area. Like so many of the other groups living in New Mexico, the citizens of Taos Pueblo packed up and left. Their dwellings were abandoned as they went searching for a stable water supply. However, the exact reason for their departure is still up for debate. There has been evidence of a massive violent struggle that took place here, suggesting it may have been conflict that drove the original inhabitants to leave. When Spanish conquistadors arrived in 1540, the ruins of Taos Pueblo were found, Though to be certain, it's unclear when people had begun to return following their original departure. The Spanish took an interest in the city themselves and moved in. In 1620, Spanish Jesuits constructed a Catholic church. 
There were some major cultural tensions, though, and in 1660, the natives rioted, killed the priest, and burned down the church. Have you ever been to Taos? Do you recommend it? Let us all know in the comments below. Number 7. Lassiter's Reef In 1929, Harold Bell Lassiter made a bold claim. He said that he discovered a rich gold deposit in a remote and desolate part of central Australia. In October of that same year, he wrote a letter to Australian authorities claiming he found a vast gold reef near the edge of the McDonnell Ranges and needed help finding it. Despite his claim, the government ignored him. Nobody made any effort to go out into the inhospitable wasteland and search for the gold deposit Harold had supposedly found. In March of 1930, Harold reached out to the Australian Workers' Union. Yet again, he was painfully ignored. He didn't have enough money but desperately wanted to secure the gold he believed was out there waiting for him. Luckily for Harold, the 1930s brought the Great Depression. There was a much greater interest in Australian gold mining. He managed to secure a massive amount of money from a private donor for an expedition to relocate the gold reef. The group left from Alice Springs with motorized vehicles in March of 1930, but things started to go wrong right away. Harold proved to be a miserable guide. He took them on a wild goose chase, and the leader of the expedition grew tired of it. He called Harold a nut job and ended the mission. But Harold continued on his own with a pair of camels. Long story short, Harold's body was found in the desert in March of 1931. He died from malnutrition, still hunting for the gold that has yet to ever be found. Do you think Lassiter's Golden Reef is a real place? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 6. The Odeon of Crete Archaeologists on the island of Crete in Greece have discovered something amazing. A very rare ancient Odeon was found in the remote wilderness of the island. An Odeon is an ancient structure used by Greeks and Romans usually for musical performances. The Roman Odeon was used roughly 2,000 years ago for everything from public lectures to city council meetings. It may even have been used for things like musical contests, which would have brought the whole community out to celebrate. The ruin was found near the ancient lost city of Lysos, hidden deep in Crete's mountains. The archaeological remains here can only be seen by those willing to hike through the rough terrain to reach them. Most of Lysos has been ignored by archaeologists because it's too annoying to get to. But a recent group of stout-hearted researchers decided to take the extra time and complete some excavations. This impressive Odeon was one of their biggest discoveries. If you're still not sure what an Odeon was, just imagine an amphitheater built on the side of a mountain and open to the fresh air. It was an outdoor auditorium, and its presence here in Lysos means the city was once far more important than anyone imagined. For there to be such a large auditorium in the town, it must have been prosperous. We already know it was inhabited since at least the 4th century BC, right across the Mediterranean Sea from Libya. Lysos had to be an important stop on naval trading routes across the Mediterranean. Archaeologists even found a temple here dedicated to Asclepius, the Greek god of medicine. Number 5. Ancient Viking Treasure A gold disc was recently uncovered in Denmark that appears to boast the oldest known mention of everyone's favorite Norse god-king, Odin. The inscription on the mysterious gold disc mentions Odin by name 150 years before anything else. The gold disc, known as a bracteate, was crafted around the 5th century AD. Up until now, the oldest mention of Odin was found on a brooch excavated from Germany that came from the latter part of the 6th century. Assistant professor Simon Nygaard from Aarhus University says the artifact is now the smoking gun that proves Odin existed in Scandinavia at least as early as 1,600 years ago. But what's the significance of all this? First of all, Odin is the main god of Norse mythology. Thor might be more popular these days, but Thor never eclipsed Odin in the original belief system. When the rest of Europe was focused on Christianity and Judaism, Scandinavia still held strong to their beliefs in Norse lore. The Vikings kept their beliefs going until they eventually succumbed to Christianity a thousand years ago. 
What nobody's ever known is when exactly Norse mythology began to take shape. It likely came before Christianity, but it's tough to find evidence of. That's what makes the gold disc, uncovered in a remote treasure hoard, so remarkable. It's physical evidence that Odin was worshipped in Denmark starting in the 5th century. But we still don't know where Odin came from originally, or how long he'd already been worshipped. Number 4. Ancient Horse Riders Humans may have been riding horses for the past 5,000 years. A grave that was recently discovered in the remote Bulgarian countryside contains the remains of what could be the earliest horseback riders ever. Scientists have always wondered when human beings started riding horses. Technically, horses were the first vehicles we used to move across the land faster. Now researchers with the University of Helsinki have dug up evidence of humans riding horses five millennia ago. This is shocking because it would predate the oldest unequivocal evidence for domesticated horses by about 1,000 years. Researchers have already found horses buried with chariots in the remote Russian wilderness. Other studies have proved that horses lived with humans, whether they were ridden or not, in Kazakhstan at least 5,500 years ago. Scientists looked at the human remains of 156 dead people throughout 39 burial sites in the Eurasian steppes. This is the area where some of the earliest horseback riders flourished. Scientists looked specifically for traits in the bones that may have been a result of frequent horseback riding. Specifically, they looked at the muscle attachment site on pelvis and thigh bones. What they discovered was that the ancient riders were the people of the Yamnaya culture who lived in Bulgaria, Hungary, and Romania. Remains taken from graves in remote Bulgaria proved the oldest, dating back to 3000 BC. Number 3. The Nescliff Hill Fort Hidden in the English countryside is a place called the Nescliff Hill Fort. It was recently excavated by archaeologists from the University of Oxford who uncovered the massive remains of an Iron Age hill fort. This place is so old, experts haven't found any organic matter to shed light on what life was like here. They didn't find any pieces of wood, any fabrics, or even any shards of pottery. All they know is that there was once a huge defensive edifice in the middle of absolutely nowhere, in the Severn Valley. The few fragments of stone discovered have been dated back to about 600 BC. This fortress stood tall and proud over 600 years before the Romans invaded England and started building their own fortifications. In 2022, the team revealed the front facade of a rampart. They found tool markings made 2,500 years ago and unearthed the remains of a ditch that might have been a kind of prehistoric moat. Gary Locke, a professor from the university and lead scientist on the project, says everyone's been surprised by how huge the fortress was in its prime. This thing was built during a time when Britain was largely occupied by humble farmers, and yet some group went through the trouble of building a massive tower of stone. But Gary doesn't know who built the tower or why. We don't even know how these people socially organized themselves. This is prehistoric archaeology, meaning we are looking at people who had no written records and lived in tribes ruled by chiefs and elders. Gary says they were most likely a superstitious people, a group that had their own unique gods and deities. Number 2. Medieval Spanish Fortress An ancient fortress town was discovered on a remote hilltop in Spain. It was found in Galicia in 1865 by archaeologist Manuel Murgia. He believed the fortress town was built during the Iron Age, making it at least 3,500 years old. The settlement at the top of the hill in the middle of nowhere maintained its reputation as an Iron Age site up until recently, when researchers took a new look at it. Scientists from the University of Santiago de Compostela found evidence that the settlement, named Castro Valente, is in fact from the medieval period. It was most likely built only about 1400 years ago in the 7th century AD. It's about 2000 years younger than previously believed. It's pretty rare for archaeologists to make such a gruesome mistake when dating an ancient place. This was a particularly egregious mistake because it took over a century to fix. 
Archaeologists only corrected the historical record by accident when they employed new LiDAR technology. The researchers used a system of laser beams attached to an aerial platform to create a three-dimensional image of the site. They were able to map the entire area using this new technology, getting an unprecedented look at the remains of the fortress town. They identified over 30 stone towers that once protected a massive settlement. There were heavy walls and reinforced protective barriers. What really shocked experts was that the 3D image of the fortified town looked suspiciously like a medieval fortress. That was when they realized the site is significantly younger than previously believed. They are quite literally rewriting history here and now have a massive mystery to solve. Archaeologists want to understand who built the fortress, who lived in it, and where they went. Number 1. The Wheel In the remote British countryside, a wheel was discovered. Not just any ordinary wheel, one from the Bronze Age. It could be the biggest and earliest wooden wheel ever found in Britain. It was discovered buried under the soil at an ancient place dubbed Britain's Pompeii. Archaeologists are calling the 3,000-year-old artifact unprecedented. The wheel is about three feet in diameter and still attached to its hub. It appears to have been burned, but not much more is known yet. It was discovered at an ancient farming site, a place that was occupied at the end of the Bronze Age from 1100 to 800 BC. There was likely a small group of families living here with maybe four or five large round houses built on stilts above the shallow water. The wheel was found near the remains of the biggest house, so it's believed it belonged to the most important family. It's not clear what the wooden wheel was used for. It could have been part of a horse-drawn cart, but there is no way of saying for sure. Archaeologists think the wheel suffered burn damage when the whole settlement was eradicated in a fire. Thanks for watching! Which discovery did you like the most? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!